React Hook Form is a library for managing and validating forms. It's a performant library that improves the app performance by reducing the amount of code you need to write and minimizing the number of re-renders. React Hook Form is also super light, having zero dependencies. Lastly, you can integrate React Hook Forms with the majority of the available React UI libraries. This video teaches you how to build and validate React Forms using React Hook Form. By the end of this video, you will have a working form with default input values and validation rules. Let's start by building a form without any validation first. Import the use hook form at the top of the file as follows. Use form is a custom hook to manage the entire form. It allows you to set default form values, provide a validation schema, submit the form, plus other things. Now add the following code after the import statement. In the above code, you initialize the use form hook which returns several properties. Then you assign the properties return to the methods constant. The properties returned by the use form hook include the following. Register, which is a method you use to register input and select elements for value tracking and validation. Handle submit, which is a method that receives the form data if the form validation is successful and you use this method to handle the form submission. Form state, which is an object that holds information about the form state, including any validation errors, touched fields, dirty fields, and more. Other properties are returned, but we are only interested in these three in this case. Let's continue by rendering a form with the following input fields. Username, email, is admin, and created at. As you can see, we are making use of the properties returned by the use form hook, like handle submit and register. Later, we will use other properties as well. So let's save the form and see how it looks and works up to this point. As you can see, you can submit it even if you don't add any values and it simply outputs the data to the console. So let's add some dummy data. And you can see that it submits successfully and it outputs the data in the console. The form doesn't have any validation though, which is not ideal. So in the next step, you'll add form validation using the mechanisms provided by React hook form. Let's add the following validation logic. The username is required, it should have at least five characters and it must contain only letters, numbers and underscore. The email is required, it should be a maximum of 50 characters long and it should be a valid email address. The created date is required and for the is admin field we don't have any validation. So let's replace the input field for the username with the following code. So what's happening in this new code? The register function accepts two parameters, the name of the input or select field and the register options object. The register options object allows you to perform data validation. So let's take an even closer look at this new input field. The required flag is set to true which means the user cannot submit the form without providing a username. The validate object allows you to define custom validation rules for the input field. In this example, it checks if the username is at least 5 characters long and it also checks if it matches this given regex expression. This regex expression checks if the username contains only letters, numbers and underscore. If any of the validation rules fail, you can see the validation errors by accessing the errors object. This code displays error messages for the username input field based on the failed validation rule. So let's test these validation rules. As you can see, the form displays the appropriate error messages. Now let's apply the validation rules to the email field as well. Let's replace this input element with the following code. 
if we compare the code for the username input with the one for the email input you should observe something different the difference is that the email input code contains only one conditional rendering block for the errors previously we had three blocks for the username input field one for each error type so the more validation rules you have the more error code blocks you have however that can be improved by directly returning the error message when the validation rule fails like in this example so instead of checking for each error type you can return the validation error you provided in the validate object as a result you have less code so let's save the form and let's test the email field as well As you can see, both the username and the email fields work as they should. They display the correct error messages. Up to this point, you learn how to add multiple validation rules to a field. But what if you only want to add one validation rule, such as making the field required? Let's replace this input element with the following code. In the register options object, instead of setting the require flag to true, we provide an error message. So if the users don't select the date, this is the message that will be displayed. Let's test the form with all the validation rules in place. As you can see, it works properly. So for now, that's all about validation rules. You learn how to add one or more validation rules to your form input fields. Before finishing the form, let's define some default values for it. You can do that by passing the default values object with custom values for each input field to the use form hook. For this form, let's set the is admin flag to true by default. The rest of the fields can be empty by default. Let's pass the default values object. Now, every time a user visits the form, all the fields will be empty except the is admin checkbox, which is set to true by default. As you can see, the form works as intended. The is admin flag is checked by default and all the validation rules work correctly. Congrats! You have a working form with validation rules and default values. By the way, if you are using React hook form, stay tuned because I released two more videos. One will be about form validation with React hook form and Zod and TypeScript. And the other one will be how to share a Zod validation schema between server and client. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, share the video, like the video, leave a comment because it will help me a lot.